Hey there, Father Richard Conlon here. In a recent interview with Jake and Heather Kim, who are the founders of Life Restoration Ministries and have the podcast, The Way of the Heart, Restore the Glory and Abiding Together, I asked them a question about how to raise holy children. Listen to their five tips that they share and stay tuned as I unpack it after. Yeah, I, I, I have to be careful because I'm a pretty blunt guy. Um, so the first thing that comes to my mind is that if you have a teenager and you're trying to help them understand a saint, you need to help them see the, that the saint is normal because there's a lot of stuff out there that you can put in front of them that, that to a teenager, they'd be, they automatically go, that's weird. And so you've got to avoid the weird dynamic. You know, you can't just put stuff right in front of them. That's too far of a stretch. That's too weird. You know, like, um, we do stuff in our house like with the art and the stuff that we have in our home is art that's pretty realistic so if we're going to show a saint or somebody it's art that where they actually look like it could be a real person and so our kids are used to this like just by what they see with the catholic art that we put up that it looks like a normal person could do that i think the other things is that we try to really emphasize with joseph and others the their humanity um the thing that i i say that we don't say this to our kids but it's kind of the sentiment is that jesus's robes got dirty and what i mean by that is that he wasn't afraid of the normal life like he had calluses on his hands and he was a, he was an, a man and so there's something attractive about sanctity when a lot of the like uh, weirdness gets peeled away and you get really to the heart of what like virtue is attractive when you take away all the 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 kind of the odd stuff around it so to me i found that really important for teenagers the second one for teenagers is they're awesome at sniffing out whether or not you live it and so if i'm not living it my kids can tell it in a heartbeat and so first step to being like imparting the faith to my kids is to live it myself mm -hmm. because they can see the difference. They see us live our life uh, devoted to, to God and make decisions and things like that. And then it's not quite as like, wow, mom and dad take this seriously. Um, and I would say the other thing that comes to my mind, I think parents like do something, do something cool, do something heroic, do something that's, that's big that's interesting like go actually feed the poor like literally go and join some place where you see a person right in front of you that you have to put food in there like it changes the face of the church for teenagers when they're faced right there do something that's interesting to a teenager that includes God. I find teenagers get really interested when there's a homeless person or stuff like that. I've seen them have really powerful experiences, mission trips, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say, you know, to try to focus more on what I was talking about, about real, you know, uh, personal encounters with God and intimacy with God instead of just rules, because the rules are important, but the goal of the rule is to help our hearts be conformed to God and his will. And so I know my teenagers, they don't want to hear about more of what they should or shouldn't do, but they, they will respond to being inspired to be a good person, to being, you know, someone of character and to stand up for what is right and good and true. And, and that's what I want for them is to be people after God's heart that we talked about earlier. We do just really quick. We do one more thing is we're, we don't, we're not afraid of talking about the culture with our kids. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot. I mean, essentially in my work, we'd call it empathy training. Like we do a lot of empathy training with our kids where we'll take a scenario and go, how do you think that actually impacted that person? Or, you know, like TikTok and all the stuff that the teenagers are into these days. And you just go, Let's just break it down. Let's just be honest and break down. Like what's going on for there? How's it impacting you? Here's what research says. Here's what, you know, and then all of a sudden you, the kid, our kids are like, wow, we can't like just dismiss you because we're offering, we're, we're engaged in the culture. We're not afraid of the culture. We're not, we're not condoning everything the culture says, but 
I find that like I, they, my kids want to know that I know what TikTok is and they want to know that I, I know what like the latest songs are, or if I don't, I'm willing to hear it. And then, okay, well, let's, let's talk about it. What do you like about it? Why is that good? It's a cool rhythm or like, what are they actually saying? Or what would that be like if they were singing that about your sister? Like how, the, how would you feel if that song was being sung about your sister? Like it just changes the dynamic, I think a bit of some of the maybe less than desirable stuff. But. Great tips from Jake and Heather Kim. I really see it narrowing down to this one key aspect of living the faith. See, you can't give what you don't have. If you're not striving for holiness yourself, you're not going to be able to impart that to your children. Now, this living the faith integrates the other things that they shared as well about facilitating real personal encounters with God, about doing something big for God, and then being able to use your faith to talk about the culture in a way that's attractive, in a way that allows your children to see how your Catholic faith integrates all aspects of your lives. And then also to put up pictures of the saints, to see that these saints are real people. And your children will also look to you as a living saint, as just St. Therese looked to her father, Louis, your children will look to you as the real saints in their midst. I hope these five tips inspired you to think about how you can raise holy children. Feel free to comment below on what one of the five tips stood out for you, as well as what's advice that you've received, things that you have found helpful to raise your children. God bless.